The years ahead are not going to be pretty, and I would advise you to prepare accordingly. Amen to that. Ladies and gentlemen, I always hope that when I put out a new video, that we get at least one or two people watching it that have never come across this channel before. And if you are one of them, I have to explain to you that I am not a fear monger. I just put things out there that I see and that have validity in my opinion. I'm not perfect. I've been wrong before and I could be wrong again and I more than likely will be, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, YouTubers. Alaska Prepper here. Take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is an email with pictures that I received from one of our community members that's from Augusta, Georgia. And she says, I'm 57 years old and I've never seen this before. I am glad I started prepping. Ladies and gentlemen, please consider stocking up if you are not stocked up. This is not going to stop anytime soon. This article right here says that experts are warning that empty shelves and food shortages are going to continue for many weeks to come. Ladies and gentlemen, my personal opinion is going to be a lot more than weeks. So stock up, prep up, get everything that you need for at least a few months because even if you have two or three months worth of sustenance, worth of stuff that you use on an everyday basis, you can always stretch that out by trying to fill in your gaps with whatever items there are available in the market. The term return to normal is being thrown around a lot these days, but will things ever truly return to the way that they were before the health crisis came along? I don't think so. From an economic standpoint, an extraordinary amount of lasting damage has been done over the past two years. A seemingly endless list of major problems has thrown thousands upon thousands of critical supply chains into a complete and utter state of chaos. And this has resulted in some very painful shortages. For quite a while, the mainstream media kept insisting that the shortages would soon be gone. But now, they are being forced to admit the truth. And if you can believe it, NPR has even published a major story about the growing shortages in this country. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I've stated in the past, and you can look this up, look at other videos that I've done. I've said that once the mainstream media starts to say, hey, we have shortages, then time is running out. Because usually the mainstream media doesn't come out with the truth until it's either too late or almost too late. He says, you are not imagining it. Some grocery store shelves are bare again, conjuring bad memories of the spring of 2020 for many. Social media is rife with images of empty supermarket aisles and signs explaining the lack of available food and other items. Stores such as Aldi have apologized to customers for the shortages. Now, does it really matter why these shortages are occurring, ladies and gentlemen? In my opinion, the answer is no. Whatever the reason is, if it's not on the shelf, you're not going to be able to get it. So if you see it and you need it, get it. And if you can get one or two extra, get that one or two extra, ladies and gentlemen. Don't listen to what the naysayers say. It's your children, it's your family that will thank you later for having those supplies ahead of time. Nobody in the mainstream media ever imagined that the shortages would last this long. For certain items such as computer chips, the duration of the shortages is now approaching two full years. And of course, fear of this variant has made things even worse. And one expert interviewed by NPR suggested that supermarkets in the U.S. are now facing the perfect storm. We are really seeing the perfect storm, said Phil Lempert, editor of the website SupermarketGuru.com. Isn't it strange how that term just seems to keep popping up all over the place? And one of the major issues that supermarkets on the East Coast are facing, ladies and gentlemen, is the increase in container ships, the increase in shipping costs. I mean, I think it was a couple of years ago that to ship a container, a 20-foot container full of goods from the West Coast to China, let's say, or from China to the West Coast, was like $1,500, $2,000. And now we're looking at twenty. dollars $30,000 for the same container. That is a tenfold increase in shipping. And who do you think is going to end up paying that cost, that extra cost? It's not the manufacturer. It's not the wholesaler. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be those of you that want that item. 
If you want it bad enough, you will pay it. And when the shelves become less and less full, when they become more and more empty, people are going to say, yes, I'll pay it because I need it. So get your stuff now if you can. Stock up now if you can. Many Americans don't realize this, but much of the fresh produce that we enjoy is actually grown in a handful of western states. In fact, 99% of walnuts, 97% of kiwis, 97% of plums, 95% of celery, 95% of garlic, 89% of cauliflower, 71% of spinach, and 69% of carrots grown in the United States come from the state of California. To get all of that produce to the stores in the East has always been a major production, but today it has also become exceedingly expensive. Growers of perishable produce across the West Coast are paying nearly triple pre-health crisis trucking rates to ship things like lettuce and berries before they spoil. Shea Myers, CEO of Owehi Produce, which grows onions, watermelons, and asparagus along the border of Idaho and Oregon, said he has been holding off shipping onions to retail distributors until freight costs go down. Myers said transportation disruptions in the last three weeks caused by a lack of truck drivers and recent highway blocking storms have led to a doubling of freight costs for fruit and vegetable producers on top of already elevated health crisis prices. We typically will ship East Coast to West Coast. We used to do it for about $7,000, he said. Today, it's somewhere between eighteen dollars and $22,000. Unfortunately, the issues that are plaguing the industry are not going to be cleared up anytime soon. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's not weeks, right? It's not weeks. According to the CEO of Conagra Brands, supply chain issues will continue to be a huge headache for his company for at least the next month. Bird's Eye Frozen Vegetable Maker Congra Brands CEO Sean Connolly told investors last week that supplies from its U.S. plant could be constrained for at least the next month due to this variant-related absence. And ladies and gentlemen, when they're talking about like for the next month, it's because they're talking about produce. They're talking about foods that are perishable. And the CEO of Albertsons is anticipating continued supply chain woes over the next four to six weeks. Of course, these corporate leaders are anticipating that this variant wave will eventually fade and operations will start getting back to normal as warmer weather comes along. But in order to do that, they are going to have to find a lot more workers from somewhere. According to another industry expert, the consumer packaged goods industry in the United States is missing around 120,000 workers right now. She says the situation is not expected to abate for at least a few more weeks. The consumer packaged goods industry is missing around 120,000 workers, out of which only 1,500 jobs were added last month, she said, while the National Grocers Association said that many of its grocery store members were operating with less than 50% of their workforce capacity. Remember the perfect storm that I've been talking about, ladies and gentlemen? Well, it's starting to conjure up. People don't want to go to work. Why? Because they are starting to figure out what inflation is, which is a tool that deprives you of your labor, which is a tool that is used to steal your labor. So people are like, wait a minute, I'm getting paid more? I'm working more, but I can buy less? The heck with this. That's what people are saying, ladies and gentlemen. In addition to that, a lot of people are scared because of all of the hoopla that you hear on the mainstream media. So where are they going to find enough people to restore service to the normal levels? They can't exactly resurrect those that have died over the past year. Now that millions of workers have seemingly disappeared from the system, companies all over America are fiercely competing with one another for anyone that still has a pulse and is available. And that competition, ladies and gentlemen, is going to come in the form of salaries and benefits. Right? Those companies that pay the most will get the employees and they will also end up having to pass along the costs of paying employees more to the consumer. So if the food industry wants to hire thousands upon thousands of new workers, they are going to have to radically raise wages. And if they do that, we will be paying even more to fill up our carts at the grocery store. Today, a full shopping cart full of food can run more than $300 in many areas. Will that figure soon reach 400 
We're 500. And what happens if supply chain problems persist for many months to come, like analysts at Deutsche Bank are now projecting? They say that for 2022, we expect supply pressures to likely linger for longer, perhaps until the second half of next year before gradually unwinding, says Deutsche Bank. But just like everyone else, the analysts at Deutsche Bank are also assuming that conditions will return to normal eventually. Ladies and gentlemen, conditions are not going to return to normal. They just told you right here that they're not. What do they mean by normal? What they mean by normal is that prices are going to continue to go up. Because once you pay a workforce X number of dollars, they're not going to stay if you decrease their pay. So if inflation is being created by salaries, all right, salary inflation, meaning that you, the consumer, is going to have to pay more for that product because workers are getting paid more, once everything returns to normal, it doesn't mean that salaries will return to normal. It just means that you'll have enough shipping containers, that you'll have enough truckers. I don't see that happening for a pretty long time, but let's say it does. These people are still going to be getting paid what they're getting paid in order to get them back into the workforce. And once things return to normal, they're not going to give up that pay or else we'll be back right where we started. It would really be nice if that actually happened, but as Wolf Richter has pointed out, grocery stores have desperately been trying to return to normal for 20 months. Grocery stores have been trying to stock up for 20 months now to fill the holes and catch up with this historic surge in demand, but every time they make a little headway, new constraints and problems emerge. Constraints and problems produced by who, ladies and gentlemen? I'll let you put that down in the comments. And they still don't have enough inventory on hand to get over the hump, and they temporarily and sporadically run out of some items. The elephant in the room that nobody really wants to talk about is the fact that our supply chains will never fully return to the way they were in 2019. And with that, I have to agree. Why? Because as they say here, too much has changed. And those changes that have been made, in my opinion, some of them you cannot turn around. You cannot bring them back. They're irreversible, if you want to put it that way. Yes, there will be a lot of ups and downs, but I actually believe that many of the problems that we are facing today will actually grow over time. It took decades of incredibly bad decisions to get us to this point, and the gross incompetence being displayed by our leaders in Washington does not give me confidence that things will turn around anytime soon. The years ahead are not going to be pretty, and I would advise you to prepare accordingly. Amen to that. Ladies and gentlemen, I always hope that when I put out a new video that we get at least one or two people watching it that have never come across this channel before. And if you are one of them, I have to explain to you that I am not a fear monger. I just put things out there that I see and that have validity in my opinion. I'm not perfect. I've been wrong before. And I could be wrong again, and I more than likely will be, ladies and gentlemen. However, you can see with your own eyes, right? That email that I received of the person that sent me those pictures, that was just a random email. It's not me searching for this thing, right? I've had several other emails from other people from different parts of the country sending me pictures just like that. I've shown you pictures or videos of me going to our local Walmart and showing you how the shelves are being emptied out as well. And one of the recommendations that I gave to those of you that may be finding yourselves in that predicament where you live, that your shelves are empty, is that if you have a Sam's Club or a Costco near you, try to get a membership to one of those big box stores. And the reason is, is that since they are a membership-based box store, they're usually better stocked. All right, my Costco is better stocked than the local Walmart and the local supermarkets that are here in the Fairbanks area in and around where I live, right? But the big box stores are much better stocked than those smaller supermarkets. So that's one thing that you can do. If you haven't started prepping, take a look at several of my videos where I show you how to prep on the cheap and I show you what to put away and how long it'll last, right? Try to concentrate on those things that you normally eat and stock up in mass, ladies and gentlemen. Stock up in mass and if you care about what someone tells you because you're stocking up, then it is you, ladies and gentlemen, that will have to listen to your children ask you for food when you run out. 
because you had too much pride to go out there and get a few extra things now while they were still available. Having said that, I hope that you have a great day. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. I'm Alaska Prepper. I'm out. Nutrient Survival now offers what is called a pantry bag. And although you have an option of packaging now, the product inside of the number 10 cans and inside of these pantry bags are exactly the same. It's just a different packaging. So why did Nutrient Survival decide to go with a different packaging? Well, for a couple of reasons. These pantry bags are specifically for those of us who eat Nutrient Survival on a regular basis. They are still able to be stored for long term, but since the pantry bags are constructed of a thick mylar material and not metal, the shelf life for the pantry bags is 15 years instead of the 25 year shelf life that the number 10 cans offer. Now here is where the money savings comes in, ladies and gentlemen. In order to promote this new item, Nutrient Survival has put together a bundle that they call the Two Week Jumpstart Kit. This kit includes a triple mac cheese, hearty lasagna, southwestern medley, hearty apple cinnamon oatmeal, creamy chocolate shake, maple almond grain crunch, and the peanut butter bars which are included at no cost with this bundle. After doing some math, if you were to purchase this exact same kit at the same price that you would pay for the number 10 cans, you would be paying about $25 more for the same amount of servings of all of the products offered in this kit. So pretty much, ladies and gentlemen, if you were to buy the exact same amount of product in number 10 cans, you'd be paying about $25 more. And not only are you saving $25 bucks by purchasing the pantry bags, but since Nutrient Survival is giving away the peanut butter bars with this purchase, you save an additional $35 for a total of $60. And we can't forget about my AP10 code, ladies and gentlemen. If you use my link combined with the AP10 code at checkout, you will save an additional 10% or $26 off your purchase price for a total of $86 in savings. I think that's awesome. And that equals to about 29% in savings should you compare it to buying number 10 cans, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you take advantage of this awesome savings because this is a great savings. So whether you're digging in or bugging out, you don't just survive an emergency situation, you thrive in it. Nutrient Survival. Feed your freedom.